Howdy YouTube, Unky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse. Today, we're going to have a hit and a miss. We're going to try and install VMware vCenter server appliance on my ESXi 6.5 server on this IBM 3650 behind me. X3650 M3 to be precise. And I can tell you right now, it's, it's not going to work. It's going to fail. If you join my live stream uh, this Saturday, today, I just finished it a few hours ago, I discussed this in some minor detail, the problem I'm having getting vCenter to work in ESXi out of the box. Uh, and I've done, I've exhausted all my options that I can find. I have searched the net high and low for the error messages I'm getting. And uh, But what I'm going to do is go through and install, and I'm going to show you where it bombs out. And then I'm gonna, we're going to go over the log file together. So maybe you and I can figure this out together. Any help you can give would be greatly appreciated. Because without vCenter, ESXi is worthless to me. It's like having a Hyper-V without the ability to live migrate or move files. Just, I'm not going to have it. I'm not going to put up with it. And I'm going to be doing another video based on ESXi uh, doing a server. And I can't do that until I get this problem resolved. So let's go and let's see what's happening with this install and where i went wrong so before we begin this endeavor it's very important that um, i'm told that in order for a vcenter install to be successful you need to have dns set up properly so this is my mcs local domain and as you can see in here i have a host name set up for my esxi server that refers to its ip address so the fully qualified domain domain name is esxi.mcs.local and then I've created one for vCenter and I know I'm going to want my vCenter server at 5.14 so I have created a, uh, a fully qualified domain name vCenter.mcs.local so my DNS is set up I've also gone out and created reverse lookup zones so there's the one for esxi and there's the one for vCenter. And if I were to come out to a command prompt, which is what I'm going to do next, and if I ping ESXi, I get a fully qualified domain name and I get an IP address. And then if I ping vCenter, it should translate, but not get a reply and it does so it sees vcenter at 5.14 even though it's not up and running so now what i'm going to attempt to do is install vcenter and either it's going to work or it's going to fail miserably like it did last time uh, and frankly without having vcenter on my uh, esxi esxi is kind of kind of worth worthless to me because i'm constantly moving uh, virtual machines around and I know there's a way to move virtual machines around in, in ESXi without having vCenter, but I want to have all the same tools I do in Microsoft uh, Hyper-V. As you can see, this is running uh, on an IBM 3650. It is the, well, it was the latest 6.5 UI U1. Thank you to Hank for getting me this image uh, to run on a Lenovo or a slash IBM server. You see my DNS servers are first pointing to my internal and then to my external DNS, my gateways in there. It knows the host name is esxi.mcs.local. So all should be well with DNS, you would think, right? All right, so I have, uh, I do have the 6.7 version of the vCenter server, but I want to start with version 6.5 and we'll go to 6. Point baby steps here, folks. Uh, we'll join that later. So the first thing I want to do is come up here and I'm going to open that with uh, Windows Explorer. Because I have Magic ISO Maker on here, you notice I don't have the option to mount. And because I also have Magic ISO. But I want to mount with uh, uh, Windows Explorer. So I'm just going to right click there and select it. And then I want to use the uh, VCSI UI installer, Win32. And then what I'm going to do is run this installer right here. All right, let's minimize that. So I'm going to install a new vCenter server appliance. I'm going to click the monkey buttons here. I'm going to use the standard embedded. 
Okay, and I need to know the ESXi host or vCenter server name, so I'm going to type in esxi.mcs.local. And I'm going to type in my root and my password, my super secret password here. Click on next, and yep, it sees it. So I'll tell it yes to accept the certificate. Now, my VMware uh, vCenter appliance. I, the VM name is going to be vCenter. We'll just call it that. I'm going to give it a password. Oh, it wants a complicated password. Hang on. I had to create a new... Okay, come on. Accept that. Thank you. Yeah, I had to create an ultra complex password. But I've committed it to memory now, so we should be good. And it accepts it. So next... Select my dis deployment size of tiny. It really doesn't matter here. I'm going to put it on uh, DS. Uh, I just put on DS2 for now, and I'm going to enable thin disk mode. So I'm going to go next. Now uh, the VM network. It's going to have a static IP. We're going to call it vCenter. Now, does that want the fully qualified domain name? Yes. vCenter uses the FQDN or IP address as a system name. If you leave the optional FQDN field empty, the IP address will be used as the system name, which we don't want it to do. The system name is encoded in the SSL, so that's why I want to go ahead and use F FQDN if at all possible. So that would be uh, vCenter.mc, sorry, .mcs.local. and it seems to like it this time. So that's going to be an IP address of 192.168.5.14 subnet mass and our gateway or a router and then I'm just going to enter the single DNS server that I have on my local network right there. Oh, got to fix that boo boo. Bing bang boom. Same way here. I forgot to hit the uh, period. All right, go ahead and do next. And then I'm gonna click on finish, but while I click, before I click on finish, I'm gonna bring up ESXi here so we can see it uh, creating a virtual machine as we do things. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on finish. And we'll uh, let this run. Let me move this over here. Now it looked like I had everything in there that it needed, right? I've done this several times. As you can see, it's created the machine now called vCenter. So if we go over here to vCenter, you'll see it's creating it. It's deploying the appliance. So I'm going to let this run. And if we're successful, I'll come back with a successful screen. If we're not, I'll come back with a failure screen and we'll go over where it failed and what, what stage my virtual machines got to. All right, so this is normally where it bombs out. Now what I've got on the left side over here is my vCenter console connection so I can monitor what is going on with vCenter. As you can see, if you look behind it, oops, sorry about that, pointed the wrong way to... Uh, vCenter is powered up, it's got all the hard drives set up, the, the network adapter, etc. And then I've got the vCenter install over here saying it's installing the RPMs. Now, what I'm going to make sure I do this time is I'm going to let this run for at least 30 minutes. And typically it would get to 98% and then just sit there forever. So uh, what I'm going to do, like I say, is let this run at least a half an hour. Uh, meanwhile, while I'm keeping an eye on over here at what's going on uh, in, in my console window. Uh, so it looks like the console is up and running. Uh, I'm told that I can go to this console and press the escape key. That's not true. Uh, and see what's going on in the background. But I'm just gonna I'm just gonna say hopefully that uh, this is correct and that the RPMs are just gonna take a while to install. 
So I'm going to give it at least 30 minutes to do this, and then we'll come back and see where we are in half an hour or sooner if something happens. Okay, so see, here's something that's changed. Uh, we're now up to the console window uh, for vCenter. If you see down here, it says HTTP colon forward slash forward slash localhost. Well, that is not the name I gave the system. Uh, I don't see the IP address in there at all. And the vCenter server is still stuck on, stuck on 80% uh, installing RPM. So I'm at a loss as what to do. But what I think I'm going to do is come over here to vCenter. And I'm going to hit the F2 key. Oh, I probably got to use that new password I created. Nope, invalid login or password. So that tells me that the vCenter is not actually configured yet, and I just need to be a little more patient. My, uh, I'm still stuck at 80%, but um, it hasn't been a half an hour, so we'll let it run. We'll come back after a half an hour and see where we're at. Oh, VMware, how I hate you. Okay, so here we are, half an hour later. Let me go to my console. You can see nothing has changed here on the appliance, on the virtual appliance. No IP, no host name, no nothing. It says root password has not been set, RPM installation failed. And if we come over to the vCenter appliance installer, no error message, still stuck at 80%. Let's close it and see what happens. It says the deployment will continue in the background. You can find out the deployment is successfully completed by looking at the logs located in my user app data local temp vcsa UI installer. Click yes to close the installer. Okay. And uh, I'm just going to say finish and nothing okay duplicate vcenter show close and um it didn't work so let's go see if we can find the log file and see what happened so let's do my next favorite thing which is to next to uh taking a nail and hammer through my nether regions uh and nailing them to a drawer i like to read log files it's my second favorite thing to do well, we see that the target IP address is, it's seeing the ESXi, it sees the server, it can log into it. You see it logged into it as a root with a session and initiated a ping timer. Okay, it did a pre-check again, it verified that ESXi.mcs.local, it sees it as 6.5. Uh, the pre-check succeeded. VM name was vCenter. You can see it mounted my ovftool.exe file off of my mounted install drive. Let's see. I'm looking for any. I'm just going to scroll down as slowly as I can and be as patient as I can. Okay, I see an error here. Disk space tiny was not obtained. Undefined storage. And that error seems to repeat. Let's see here. I'm looking for anything obvious. So, you guys pause the video as you're reading this, you VMware experts. We can see my identifiers. It's reading that correctly for my uh, server. I'm just looking for anything that might jump out at me and this one says network settings page description configure network settings for this vCenter with an embedded platform services controller IPv4 got one network network retrieved VM network let's see VM network and here we go okay now looky right there, so the, the IP value and data model after correction is vcenter.mcs.local and it resolved to 5.14, right? The DNS resolved to 5.14. Uh, vcenter is resolved to 5.14, so that looks successful. It's supposed to have given it a 5.14 address with a host name of that. 
prefix is right, the DNS right. Okay. And it does it again down here and it says you have successfully deployed the vCenter server with an embedded platform services controller. Okay. So I assume that means that the virtual machine was configured successfully. Okay, and then we have a bunch of info outputs. Power it powered on it deployed the VM, powered it on, powered on ten two seconds. Deployment completed. And there it is, esxi.mcs.local guest vm id 10, you guest user is root. And here we go. Now you see where it fails. It failed to get, right here, failed to get file transfer info server fault code, failed to authenticate with the guest operating system using the supplied credentials. Failed to authenticate over and over again. And you see that happened at you know, well the time. I hate it puts it in Zulu time, but keep on going. So the problem is it's a credentials error. So if anybody knows how to get past this error without having to reinstall all over again, uh, I'm going to do a little research myself on the web and see what I find. But um, I'm sorry. Uh, if I had just paid thousands of dollars for this software and had this kind of problem, I would be very, very upset uh, that uh, that it didn't work with the click of a mouse button. And uh, I think the previous way they installed this was you actually deployed an OVF and then you went in and configured it. And I think that's where this is failing because it appears it's creating the virtual machine, but then when it tries to copy files to it, as you can see up here, uh, it says, well, I'm not authorized to log into that machine. And so then I just, you know, I just deleted or I stopped the install. And that's where we ended up was right here. Oh, VMware, you cost thousands of dollars and your software doesn't even install. Why is that? It, it, isn't life hard enough without having software that you pay thousands of dollars for not install properly? Oh, no, look, I, I have probably missed something really simple and stupid, uh, but I have followed the documentation. I have followed article after article, video after video, and uh, just cannot get this to install, and I've discovered things along the way. But as you can see, my DNS is set up properly. Everything is uh, propagated uh, across my network. Um, even the installer said it could go out and see the ESXi host and could create a machine called vCenter and verify that the reverse DNS uh, worked. Just go back and look at the log files. But it won't copy the RPMs. It has to something to do with use, uh, creating that admin user for the vCenter. Uh, because you notice when we got to the end there it said user root didn't have a password or wasn't created. So I think that's part of what my problem is, but I need y'all's help. So go back, pause the video on the log files, see if you guys that use ESXi on a daily basis can give me a, a hand up. Hank, this especially goes out to you uh, because uh, I know you run VMware and you sing its praises. So I really want to get this up and running. So any help you guys can give me would be greatly appreciated. We hope you found the video entertaining. Eh, maybe a little informative today. Come back and see us again. Smash that like button. Subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Please leave your comments in the comment section, but make them constructive. I don't like I, I don't mind negative comments, but I'm not gonna clutter the comment section with them. So be nice. And don't forget, folks, we will see you on the other side. Side. Side.